So, hello guys, and welcome to this new video. This time I'd like to look a bit into the mechanics behind falling sand. More particularly, how the uh, how sand exactly accelerates, so we can predict its position and velocity at any given time. Since this will be a bit of a scientific video, I think it's important to quickly mention how I performed the experiments. All I used was a fill clock with two commands hooked up to it. One which sets a given block to sand, another one which summons a falling sand entity with a certain velocity inside that block. Uh, this way, I don't need to mess with the sand's time tag, which I found to be more realistic. The block is placed on top of an open fence gate, so even though the block doesn't start falling, uh, the falling sand's motion shouldn't be hindered in any way. Then, to extract uh, the data from these entities, I opened the world in MT Edit and ran a custom filter which extracts relevant MVT tags like position and motion from these entities and summarizes them in lists. Thanks to PyPlot, I was also able to convert these into nice graphs, which I will be using in this video. The first experiment I did gave the falling sand entity no initial velocity. Right away we can tell that the entity experiences some kind of drag, as gravity alone should result in a quasi-parabolic curve, representing position over time, of course. However, in reality the sand's velocity seems to be almost constant after a while. Before I looked uh, into this any further, I performed some other experiments, which also gave the sand an initial horizontal velocity. Interestingly, the graph representing the vertical position over time seems to be exactly the same, and indeed, I had my filter check the data and each point is identical, uh, or at least to a margin of one millionth of a block. At this point, I felt like doing some research and trying to find what kind of physics uh, the developers could have used as a basis for falling sand. I ended up reading about the drag equation, which uh, of course is still a bit of an ideal law, but more realistic than no air resistance at all, so I thought I would test if Minecraft was using this model for falling sand. I deduced that, using classical mechanics, if the drag equation was being used, acceleration divided by velocity squared should be a constant. I plotted this, and unfortunately it didn't work. Though I am also pretty sure my reduction was false anyways, as it didn't take gravity into account, just the drag force. Anyway, at this point I was tired of science and decided to start an odyssey through the Minecraft code to figure out what was going on, which lasted less than 5 minutes as, oh look, yeah, there it is. Yeah. For those with little program experience, the 5 lines in the middle basically dictate the rules of motion through air and most, if not all, non-solid blocks. Uh, though some other blocks, uh, though for some other blocks, the rules are a bit more complicated and also kind of irrelevant, so I won't discuss those. Regardless, every tick, uh, roughly 0.04 meters per tick, are subtracted from the falling sand's vertical motion to simulate gravity. Then the three-dimensional motion is updated based on the three-dimensional, uh, sorry, three-dimensional position is updated based on the three-dimensional motion at that point in time. And finally, the absolute motion is decreased by about 2% to simulate air resistance. Moral of the story, science is great, but if you know the rules of the game, there are often better alternatives. Thanks for watching, I hope you liked this video, but even if you didn't, please leave a rating, and I hope I will see you in another video.